So the Avada has been on the market for about four months now, and there's a lot of different opinion about this drone, including myself, which I will go through in today's video. So in today's video, I wanna talk about my experience using the Avada for four months, and if I had any issues after getting my replacement unit. I will also throw in a few pros and cons there to help you decide if whether this is a good purchase or if you should skip it for now. And on top of that, I will also give you some tips on how to fly this safe and how you can prevent having a prop wash. So without further ado, let's start with the good things coming from the Avada. Now the first good thing about the Avada is of course gonna be the weight. I keep on saying that in every single video that I make with the Avada because I, I'm so used to, well not anymore, but I was so used to the heavy brake of a drone, the DJI FPV, which is 795 grams. That means when you get close to the ground, you really gotta push the stake to keep it uh, from crashing, especially if you're brand new, which I was when I first got the DJI FPV. But with 410 grams in the Avada, it has a huge advantage and you don't have to do uh, you know heavy stick maneuvers to keep it up into the air even when you're flying close to the ground or you want to just you know spin up from an obstacle or anything like that so a huge advantage for the Avara and I keep on saying that because I really really mean that weight has a huge impact on your flying experience especially if you are a beginner so 410 grams is a really big benefit for the Avara especially if you're looking to get any of the DJI FPV drones I always pack this inside my backpack so that means I have to take the props off but with this I can just throw it in there and then I can connect everything and I'm up and running much faster than I would with the DJI FPV. So that's also a factor to consider if you, you know, are on a time budget. Now for anyone getting the Avada for the very first time and starting off with the motion controller, it's just like playing a video game. So after a few minutes, you'll start to get more comfortable with the movements of the drone. And the experience is also on a whole different level with the goggles 2 and the micro OLED screen. Now, if you've been a long time subscriber here on this channel, you probably know that I crashed this Avada a fair amount of times. And he actually left itself some marks here on the prop guards and on the cage. I haven't replaced the cage yet, but it's super simple to replace it. So I'm gonna come back to that a little bit later, but yeah, I crashed this drone a lot. So let's talk about the build quality of this drone. Now, when I first got my hands on the Avara, it's, you know, it felt like it was just another plastic drone from DJI. It didn't feel robust at all, and I was quite scared about my first crash, or my second crash, or even my third crash. But you know, I was wrong. Now I've been pushing this to its limits and every time I had what I thought was a fatal crash, it pulled through like it was nothing. I've smashed it into asphalt and I hit multiple trees, but it still survived every single time. So as for the durability of the Avara, I'm actually quite impressed of how much it can take. This, you know, if I had the same crash with this, yeah, it wouldn't last a day. But this, you know, same unit crashed I think nine times now. And uh, yeah, like I said, it left its marks uh, and you know, it's still flying good. Now, if you experience any crashes and you have some damage, like I have uh, right here to the cage, it's really easy to replace. There's six screws, easy accessible screws that you need to unscrew to take off the cage. Then you can put a new one on and then you just screw the screws back on. So it's extremely easy to change the parts on the Avara and they are also reasonably priced if you ask me. Now talking about crashes, if you ever had a crash with your Avara, there's one thing that you might have noticed and that is when you find your drone, the battery is missing. So the battery on the Avara can easily be ejected if you have a hard crash. And this is a huge problem for a lot of people, including myself. So a few of my crashes has been very close to, you know, a small pool of water. And guess what? My battery has always ejected into the pool. So I'm three batteries down now, and that is gonna be really expensive if you need to replace your damaged or missing battery. Now, there is some fixes to the loss of battery, and that is to use battery straps. So either by getting some battery straps in form of Velcro or a 3D printed strap that you can just snap on at the back of your battery. This is also gonna help your battery stay in place. And uh, that means uh, if your drone is powered, you can also enable the beeper to find your drone and in best case, allow you to just turtle out of it and then fly back to your home point. 
Now, the biggest flaw of this drone, probably the, the flaw of the year, I think you already know it, but it's going to be the SD card placement. I've said it before and I'm also going to say it again. It's the worst placement ever. It would be better to have 100 gigabytes of internal storage and a single USB-C port to connect and transfer your footage, or at least when they decided to make such a bad placement for the SD card, at least include a smaller 90 degree USB-C cable to make it easier and faster for the consumer. It's a horrible placement of the SD card. Now, despite this being a problem for a lot of people, uh, you will quickly get used to it, uh, but it's, in my opinion, is a huge flaw. Uh, but like I said, I've got used to it, but I still think despite all that, I, I still think it's an awesome drone for any beginners looking into getting uh, into FPV or for any experienced drone pilot or FPV pilot. I still think this is, you know, it's a really nice drone and it's such a joy to fly a, a you know, the motion controller, as well as in manual mode, which we will cover in a bit. But unfortunately, this is not gonna be on sale for your Christmas shopping. So if you don't wanna pay the full retail price, you might wait until next year, because we might see some drop in price on the Avada. Now, what I like the most about the Avada is that it not only gives me that immersive flying experience, but it can also record in 4K up to 60 FPS, where I prefer to record in 50 FPS because it's closer to the frame rate of my main camera and also closer to the cinematic standard, which is 24 FPS. Now, it also has two downwards facing sensors, which gives you the precise landing and warning if the ground is uneven, which I think is really awesome, actually. Even though I catch it by hand most of the times, from a beginner's perspective, it will just add to the safety and you will have one less thing to worry about. But what I really liked with the Avada is that it has the different flight modes. So I can actually change to normal mode during a flight when I'm in manual mode and make it hover in place. I use this every single time I'm out flying with this drone. This is also what I start to take off with. So I do all my takeoffs in normal mode and once I have some altitude, I swap it over to manual mode. Now, when I'm done flying, I fly closer to the uh, landing position or uh, the home point where I stand and then I swap it over to uh, normal mode and then I can easily just take off the goggles and then I can land it as a normal drone. And not to mention the battery life of the Avada, uh, I mean, this is extreme compared to custom FPV drones. Even this was extreme compared to custom FPV drones. So let's talk about the battery life. Having an average flight of 12 to 13 minutes in manual mode is a huge advantage over custom FPV drones, which usually gives you about five to six minutes, tops. Now, what I really like is the way that you charge the batteries. So because it's DJI and their technology, you can, you charge these as normal batteries, normal DJI batteries. You just plug it into the charger and you wait for it to fill up and then you can just grab it and go out. So you don't need to buy any additional accessories or anything like that, like you need with custom FPV drones. Uh, so that's a huge advantage for the uh, Avada or the DJI FPV drone. They both charge in the same way. This is just smaller and gives approximately the same fly time. And you can probably get more if you fly normal mode with the motion controller and then you just cruise around to get to know your drone, then you can probably get up to 14 or 15 minutes. Now, another thing I love with the Avada is the image coming from this drone. To me, it's just amazing how good this looks. I just love it. Having everything in one drone with 4K 60 or 50 FPS, which I'm filming with, and this in like color profile, it's as easy as you want it to be to capture amazing videos. I just love the color science of the this in like color profile, and because it's just a half flat profile, I haven't really felt like I needed to put an action camera on top of the Avara, but there is reasons to do so. So let's dive into that. So what I think is a con of the Avada, you might not suffer from this issue, but it's the Avada only shooting in 50 and 60 FPS. Now, as I was finishing up this video, DJI launched a brand new firmware update for the Avada, which means we no longer are limited to 50 and 60 FPS recording. We can record now in 4K 30 FPS as well, which is something I've been asking for since day one. And I'm so excited that we now have 4K 30 FPS, which makes it so much easier to match the frame rate with my Sony A7S III, which I'm recording with right now. Now, one of the downsides with this firmware update, which still makes it a con for a lot of people, is that you're forced 
to use remote ID. That means you will need to have your phone connected to the goggles in order to fly the DJI Avara. You also need to be connected and have the DJI Fly app open so you can share your GPS location. So that's a huge downside for a lot of people. For me, it just means, you know, another device that I need to connect to the goggles to make it less convenient to travel around and record videos with the Avara for the remote ID. I don't really mind to be honest the only problem is that I need to connect my phone every single time so I'm a little bit unsure on whether I'm gonna update to the latest firmware now or wait a little bit uh, because one of the things uh, this also comes with the latest firmware is 10 bits the Cinelike so we now have 4k 30 and 10 bit which is huge now let's get serious about the Avara here for a second. Uh, let's talk about the next con, which is the crash issues, which is coming from this drone. And uh, I'm just gonna say straight off the bat here, and this is pilot error. And uh, yeah, I was wrong, I was wrong. Now the reason why I've had mixed opinions about this is because I you know, sort of lived up to what DJI told me. That's it. So I think DJI is obviously having some issues with the Avara and they keep on sending people new replacements every week to compensate. So the issues that I've seen DJI report is that this is just a malfunction and nothing else or that the unit has some problems with the ESC and what I received, you shouldn't have any issues with the new unit and the latest firmware. And in other cases, they also reported that this has been a pilot issue. So there's so many different answers that DJI is giving to people having the exact same issue. I can understand why people have mixed feelings about the Avara and why some are angry and some are not because some are not experiencing this and some are and some you know people are trying to force this on the Avara. So the big question is why is this happening and how can it be prevented? So the yo washout is not gonna happen at top speed and doing the fastest turn that you can do or flying slow and still doing the fastest turn that you can do. It actually happens when you fly normal and do a slightly above normal speed turn. So I found this video from Luke Maximo and he did some different tests and same as me, going fast and whipping around, nothing happened. But as soon as he stepped down on speed and movement, he could easily replicate the yaw washout. So to me, it's definitely a pilot issue. Now, even though this might not be fixable with a firmware update, I hope DJI takes this seriously and looks into different solutions that helps stabilize the drone when this is happening. Now, it's also worth mentioning that this is only happening with a DJI FPV controller too. So if you fly the motion controller, you will not have this issue. Now, I'm gonna leave his full video down in the description below if you want to check it out and he also has a pretty good explanation of why this is happening so I really recommend that you go check out his video. Now with the new firmware despite all the crashes that the DJI Avara has especially for beginner FPV pilots this might actually fix the your washout issue. So if you experience a lot of your washouts with your uh, Avada, then I recommend that you update to the latest firmware. Also, if you need to record in 4K30, then update to the latest firmware. But if you don't need to record in 4K30 and you still don't experience any issues with your washout, then there's no reason to update to the latest firmware and then just add the additional hassle of connecting your phone to the goggles for remote idea in order to fly the Avara. Now, this is the uh, replacement unit that I received from DJI after the first one dropped in the drink and I have still yet to experience some issues with this. I've tried to replicate uh, the same movements uh, and the same speed and the same uh, speed of the turn that Luke did in his video but I just can't manage to drop it. That's a good thing uh, because that means, you know, in the future I might not see this problem. Um, because the last test I did, I was going full out and, you know, I was spinning like a maniac, but obviously that is not the problem. The problem is when you hit that sweet spot, which is kind of strange. Now, will I still recommend the Avara despite having some cons? I mean, all the equipments that you buy is gonna have some pros and cons to it, and it's the same with the Avara. Yeah, I will still recommend this drone. Now, this combo right here with the FPV controller and the Avara, it's hands down awesome. It's extremely fun to fly. Even with the motion controller, I think it's uh, a lot more fun than it used to be because, you know, I've been getting more into using the motion controller because some part of me is, 
is still a little bit scared of dropping this into the drink. So I feel it feels a little bit safer with this, but it's more risky and more fun with this. That's my conclusion of the two controllers. Now, even though the Avada combo is more expensive than some of the custom FPVs, if you're a complete beginner, you still have to buy the goggles, you still have to buy controllers, and you still have to buy, you know, everything that you need for your custom FPV. And at the end, depending on where you live, it's gonna add up to the same or more. Here in Norway, it's gonna be more, for sure. 100% sure it's gonna be more if you have a custom FPV. Uh, but the Avada, you know, it's a great choice if you wanna start out and uh, it basically takes away all the hassle with uh, needing to purchase different devices to charge. I don't know how many different things that you need to repair it and Everything is so much easier for this if you're a beginner. Now, I understand that some people hate the Avada and some people love the Avada and some people don't care about the Avada, but that's my opinion and uh, that's why I love it so much as well. Now, let me know your thoughts on the Avada so far. Are you happy or not? If you still don't have one, will you be getting one soon or will you wait until the next FPV drone is being released or will you just go straight into custom FPV? Let me know down in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do that so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like for the algorithm. That would be really appreciated. So until next time, take care and I will see you in the next video.